Welcome to Jesus Says It Is Finished, part 21. Today we'll be reading from pages 53 and 54. Liberty-loving Galileans are likely supporters of a new kingdom. Enthusiasm is a warning. I must prevent eagerness from evolving into an uprising. Political plans that interfere with prophesied Roman rule inspire them. Still, they conflict with the mission to settle a great controversy, the war between good and evil. Struggling with honest decisions is more alarming to humans than the tragic effect of Satan's schemes. False reasoning suggests any choice they make is acceptable. If this were true, immorality could cease to abhor God. In paradise, a defendable justification to commit sin does not exist. To justify wrong deeds or sinful thoughts defends wickedness, the origin of sorrow. The purpose of my birth, death, resurrection, and ascension is to vindicate my Father, whose demand for morality is just. God's people want a Jewish king to set up a government, but at this time it would interfere with his redemption plan. Since I reject the idea of being king, some followers attempt to control their ambition. Spies alarm soldiers if they suspect a hint of rebellion. I avoid trouble by keeping a low profile. Today, my focus is on turning minds from earthly concerns to spiritual awareness. During this era, leprosy is a terminal disease which makes brave men shiver. Priests promote the mistaken idea this demoralizing affliction is outward proof of deserved punishment. To lepers, the temple is no longer open to them. Worse yet, they have to leave their home. People believe their breath pollutes the air, and a single touch is deadly. Tormented souls must warn others of their presence by shouting, Unclean! One resourceful leper clings to hope after verifying reports someone called Jesus has the power to cure every condition. Impressed friends told him the healer expects no payment. So planning the perfect moment to approach me began. From afar, he admires how I minister. This tenacious person plans to hide a gruesome face. His greater challenge is to avoid panic. The law is inflexible. Lepers must live in the same area. Even kings who show signs are not exempt. Glances in his direction encourage him to come closer. Hearing groans change into a song of praise and seeing my hands caress the sick amazes him. Answered prayers thrill a strong-willed man who senses my genuine invitation. An awareness of an unsightly outer shell changes into courage after a surge of expectation. Hopeful, he advances in response to eye contact. Focused on my reaction, a decaying body alarming the public is no longer his main concern. Panicky, the crowd flees to a safe distance while I speak life to the perishing. Shouts of hate mingled with fear go unheard. From the depth of his being, I hear, Lord, make me well. Faith that converts the heart, combined with the gift of renewed strength, glorifies God. Forgiven sins invite the remorseful to escape a dark world of guilt. Another person needs restoration, plus relief from the weight of disgrace caused by a lifestyle of harmful indulgences. Because doctors give no chance of recovery, he asks priests for prayer. The same hurtful accusation, affliction proves God's anger, offers no encouragement. Amazing testimonies motivate a dedicated search. With absolute trust, he desires most a pardon of conscience. Noticing an energy decline, loyal friends use a stretcher to transport him to Peter's home. Natural echoes help. But tonight, only those near the entrance catch a few words. Pharisees from Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem are enemies, impatient to gather lies against God. Determined to destroy me, 
they move closer to disciples who scan the room, protecting their Lord. Travelers coming from every direction represent diverse societies praying for a cure. The plan was to practice patience, not turn anxious if polite pleas fail. To help a frail friend, they start shoving through the crowd. Forceful efforts are in vain. So in desperation, they lift the dying man onto the flat roof. Quickly removing tiles, they make a space wide enough to lower his stretcher to the healer's feet. A glance into pleading eyes confirms the gift of faith. This allows him to believe I alone can ease the anguish Satan uses to torture the deceived. Because influence of conviction flows from the Spirit, I appreciate how difficult it was to make this journey.